most surveys that we see or quizzes that we see are very much angled to be beneficial to the business, but they're not that beneficial to the person filling it out. And that's why we've changed everything around to be all about the person who's filling it out. It's all about their own self-interest. At the end of it, bear in mind, if they fill out your survey, it's so that you can serve them better. If they fill out your quiz, it's so they can find out something about them. Today, we're talking about automated marketing and surveys for your business. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your interior design business? Then welcome to Wingnut Social, the podcast specifically designed to accelerate your business through increased social media presence, impactful online content, and translating industry experience into physical success. This is your design business tightly fastened. Now welcome the hosts of Wingnut Social, Darla Powell and Natalie Graff. Hey there, and welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I'm your host, Darla Powell, and I'm joined by the crime-fighting giraffe. Natalie Graff. You forgot your middle name. Jethro? Yeah. You You're going to drop that now? I might. You know why? Because today's guests, Rob and Kennedy, basically have no last name. So I was thinking, you know, I kind of want to eschew, eschew, how do you say that? I, don't ask <laughs> I don't me. I don't know how to say that. A name. And, you know, it could be one of two things. They could either be, they could either be trying to be famous like Madonna or witness protection program. So I didn't want to be like a mark. I didn't want to be a target. So I said, you know, let me leave Jethro out of it. Oh, oh, oh too late. Uh Oh, you're screwed, Darla. <laughs> Natalie. Yes, Darla. Today is a good day. It is. Because I got my little Debbie cakes from Amazon. <laughs> I know you ate like two or three already. Gingerbread, little gingerbread men, little tiny gingerbread men. And one I'm going to try probably tomorrow. Egg nog roll. Little Debbie cakes. They're, of course, they're seasonal, Christmassy. And speaking of Christmassy, I've sent you my Christmas wish list. Yeah, I'm not paying attention to it. Why? I, I because only have... you want stupid little action figures. <laughs> I want the John Wick action figure from Hot Toys. I want a bandolier thing for my iPhone. And I want the Masterclass series from whoever that is that I tagged you on Facebook. Yeah, so I can see I... classes by Anna Winter. I really am dying to get that. Yeah. So chop, chop. Get yeah, on that. Right. That's not going to happen. Christmas okay. presents. These are good Christmas ideas. It's ridiculous. Why would you? It just baffles me. Why? How much that John Wick action figure is and how much they want for a John Wick action figure. I just, I can't wrap my mind around it or my Benjamins. Okay. But that's what I want for Christmas. not what you want for Christmas. You don't have to get it. That's what I want. I think you get plenty and you don't need that for Christmas. Christmas isn't about what you need. I want a John Wick action figure or one of the other two things. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Natalie. Yes. So our guest today, besides being on the Witness Protection Program. Oh, yes, they are now. They have a super cool app, which I'll have to admit, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about. We're going to find out about. I'm very intrigued. Isn't that the whole point of having them on the podcast, Arla, <laughs> so we can find out about this? <laughs> I'm very intrigued by this because we're going to go into their response suite marketing automation system. Say that 10 times. Uh, no, no, I'm good. And they, their big thing is doing surveys as a tool for marketing. So I really, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to wrap my brain around this, much like you are around me wanting a John Wick action figure at 51 years old. Two. That's what keeps me young. I'm not 52 yet, not until May. Oh, well, close enough. Thank you. No, we don't round up around here. <laughs> so before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about Rob and Kennedy. Rob and Kennedy are the owners of Response Suite, an automated marketing software. Rob and Kennedy are the most unlikely entrepreneurs that you will ever meet, sporting hairstyles that look like comic book characters and backgrounds in psychology, hypnosis, and show business. It's hard to believe they're serial entrepreneurs with an uncanny knack for building businesses with riotous email marketing. They sound like my kind of people. They kind of do, right? Yeah. Wingnuts help me in welcoming Rob and Kennedy to the podcast. Hey there, Robin Kennedy. Welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. How the hell are you? Hello. Thanks for having us. I'm very well. We're very happy to have you guys over in Newcastle, England. You're coming from over there. And we were just discussing how you guys maybe should change the name because it's actually really kind of old castle, England. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's falling down. You know, it's more than 700 years old. Can you imagine how old the old castle must be? <laughs> oh, yeah. That is very old. Yes, I can imagine. I guess it's all relative, isn't it? 
Possibly. So before we dive in and talk a little bit about the response suite marketing automation systems, gosh, that's a mouthful. Tell me a little bit about you guys, a little bit about your background, and before we figure out what the hell we're talking about today. <laughs> Our background is a little bit weird. Uh, we both come from the world of entertainment. So I'm actually, I'm Rob, I'm actually a comedy stage hypnotist. Uh, I've done that for the past 17 years, just under 16 and a half years. Okay, wait. So if, if you're not funny, do you hypnotize the audience to laugh at your jokes? That's Is that exactly how that works? How works? Okay. All right. Please carry on. Do a show, hypnotize people, make them do crazy things just for, just for laughs. And so Kennedy is a mind reader of all things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that means I combine psychology, body language, looking at statistics about human behavior. And I use that to entertain people in a way that looks a lot like I can read people's minds. So we're both in this sort of realm of what's become known as sort of psychological entertainment, if you like, you know, the, sounds much smarter than we are. It does. It? Yeah. So we've done that for again, the past 16, 17 years. We became pals through with a, a magician's convention of all things where magicians hang out and show each other card tricks. We attended one and have attended lots of them and we met then. Mm. And along the way, we just sort of used to like brainstorm business ideas in terms of great, how do we get more gigs and how can we put our fees up and all of those things. And we were just, I suppose, fortunate that at quite an early age, we got quite good at that stuff and became very busy and performing. And the problem with that is that you spend lots of time in hotel departure lounges, hotels, on trains, just sort of sitting around with nothing to do. Because sometimes we'll travel for 10, 15, 20 hours to do a one-hour show, and then we travel back again. And so that's all a bit sort of chaos. So we decided to start our own separate businesses that we could do in the meantime while we're traveling, and we did that. And then eventually that led us to a problem that we faced with our marketing, something we needed to be able to do. And we sort of debated back and forth trying to work it. Okay, great. Let's kind of talk about this and see how we can do something to solve it. And that eventually led to the creation of our software platform response suite. So now we spend a chunk of our lives traveling around the world performing, spend a chunk of our lives running our sort of independent businesses. And then alongside all of that, we have response suite here. What's really interesting about response suite is it's actually something that we're able to like scale rather than relying on every time you're not performing, you're actually not earning. So that's one of the great things about having a scalable business where it's not just exchanging dollars for hours, I suppose. That's a great marriage. So tell us a little bit more about Response Suite, because in the research I've done with my podcast producer, Karina Jones, I see a lot of lead magnets and surveys and powerful tool for marketing. So where do you guys have the background, the business background? To, but, but to wait what? a minute, darling, uh -huh. I'm going to interrupt you because you were going to let me ask exactly what the hell it is. Oh, yeah, I was. Go yeah, ahead. You yeah, were. Go, See, go. Darla, you are way off track here. <laughs> Guys, exactly. Please, what is this? Why do what I need to know about this? What is Response Suite? Yeah. Great question. All right. So Response Suite was something we found out of the necessity that we actually needed it ourselves and then realized when we we're talking to others about it, they actually thought, actually, that's something I need as well. And that is, imagine you could run a survey that rather than the, that data that you collect being anonymous that you can do nothing with, because you can't attribute to a single individual. And also it's trapped inside your survey software. Imagine instead you can attribute that to an individual and then pass all that information into the hub of your business, which is your email marketing automation systems or your CRM systems. So what we build is Response Suite, which is a survey tool where you drag and drop your own surveys together with literally no technical know-how needed whatsoever. And then that is able to be pushed into your email marketing automation systems in a way that allows you to segment everybody based on every single little response that they make. So if they tell you that they like certain things, you can now tag them with those preferences in your marketing system and now follow up with the perfect messages for that individual person. Okay, so how do you see surveys as such a powerful tool for marketing? Just is that the first thing, like when they come to your website, a potential customer sees the survey and then they're just drawn in to take that? And then is that the first part of the funnel when they hit the website? Or how does how does this integrate with the rest of the marketing? Sure. So, I mean, there's a number of places you can use surveys in your business. And one of them is as, as a lead magnet, is that sort of quiz thing at the beginning. But the other one is I mean, a more, even more powerful one is to actually use it later in the funnel. So basically what we want to do is as soon as somebody comes into your business, they inquire about your product or services, they get involved in your business somehow. We now don't know that much about them other than in theory, they're vaguely interested in what it is that you've got to offer. But we don't know what their budget is. We don't know what their demand is. We don't know whether this is something they're looking at doing now or later. We don't know what their motivations are. We don't know what their objections are. So one of the best possible things that you can do at that point, and we, we've always done it, is to run some kind of survey to find out a bit more about them so that you can help 
all angled around how you can help them better, how you can help them to achieve whatever it is that they want to achieve. And so with that in mind, we realized we can run a quick survey, three or four questions, all multiple choice, just give them a bunch of options to choose from and find out a bit more about them. And that was a great premise, except that we then couldn't do anything with that data. All we could do is look at a pie chart and say, well, do you know what? 60% of people are this type of person and 40% of people are this type of person, so on and so forth. We couldn't do anything with it. So at that point, if we can literally just run a quick survey and find out exactly what it is that people want, where they're at in their journey right now, and how we can help them get to where they want to be, how close they are to making a buying decision, then it's super simple for us now to be able to put something into place. So for example, a bunch of our service provider kind of clients in all different walks of, of service providers, uh, they have a, a survey that literally asks questions like, how big of a problem for you is this right now? How close are you to that buying decision? And you can just ask people that question and they're, they're generally quite happy to answer. So you can say how important to, the, to this, how important to you is this right now from zero to 10? And if somebody says, well, it's a three out of 10, you probably want to do some nurturing and put them through a bit of a process before you try and go out and, uh, and sort of hardcore sell to them. Whereas if somebody says this is a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, pick me, the phone up, then you absolutely, you want to be on the phone to them yesterday. Oh, that's true. So you can kind of tell who's going to be a warmer lead, who's going to be a little bit of a colder lead, who's going to need more convincing. That actually makes a lot of sense. We do that at Wingnut Social on our intake. We don't have anything as sophisticated what you guys have right here right now, but it basically is a slider on a scale of one to 10. How important is the, is this problem to you right now? And that we do treat it like that. You know, if someone's a 10, I, I know they're going to be a, a hotter, warmer lead or a colder lead. Yes, Nick. And so what are some do's and don'ts when it comes to creating the survey? Do you have any guidelines for that? Totally, because we see obviously hundreds of surveys a day. So here's some really good shortcuts for you. One of the reasons that people kind of roll their eyes and feel a little bit sick in their mouths when they think of, of surveys is because generally, man, they're boring. I mean, they're boring, <laughs> right? But how do we make them less boring? And because if they're less boring, we're likely to run more of them, which means we're going to have more success with them. What we do is we make our survey shorter. There's absolutely no reason in the world to have a survey for this purpose, which has any more than four to five questions. Five questions, absolute maximum, but usually three questions, right? And the real tips on that are to figure out which stage they're at at the moment, what their aspirations are, and what their biggest challenge is right now. They are the three questions you want to ask. So that might be to do with, are you beginner, intermediate, or an absolute expert in this area? That's question one. Question two might be, what's your biggest challenge? You list off their biggest challenges. So if you're an interior designer, then it might be, I really hate my kitchen. Or it might be, my bedroom was not even sexy in the 70s. Or whatever the heck it might be. <laughs> It's those things where you're trying to figure out what their challenge is. And then the third question is, what do you want? Like, I want to turn it into my bedroom into a boudoir. I want to turn my the kitchen to look like it's off a television show. Or I want it to be a party kitchen or whatever the heck it is, right? Give them a bunch of options. So now with that information, because that survey should connect, whether you use response suite or not, right? Your survey should connect with your email marketing automation system so that now I can, if you, right now, if you, I don't know, like I say, Katrina filled out my survey. She said, I really hate my bedroom and I'm quite an expert in this, but I'm just stuck. So question one, she says, I'm an expert. Question two, she says, I hate my, I hate my kitchen. And question three, she says, I really want it to be a party kitchen. Well, the emails or the phone conversation I have with her, whatever you want to do in terms of your route to talking to them, it doesn't really matter can be very, very different to somebody else. Like Rob here, who's, who actually thinks his kitchen's just fine. It's functional. He's a functional kind of guy. Whereas he likes to have parties in his lounge and have people over for cocktails and all that sort of stuff. So he's much more into that. So I'm going to have a very different conversation with him by email or by phone. So it's three questions plus you ask for their email address. Now, of course, depending on which system you're, you're looking at, what I would uh, do is if you're emailing, I don't want to really frustrate me. I'm going to just cut you on my little high horse for a second. If you don't mind, is that okay? If I <laughs> get a little bit girl about it. So. so I don't like it. Please stop doing this. Everybody, please stop doing this, which is stop emailing me saying, hello, please go and fill out this survey. And then question four on my survey is what's your email address? Damn it. You just emailed me this survey. <laughs> you got it, man. It really is simple. You can make it really simple and actually capture my email address in the background. So I don't have to type it again. Cause guess what? Like everybody else in the world, I'm really lazy. I'm not just lazy. I'm busy. I've got a million other things I want to do. And it, one of them is not fill out your poxy survey. 
instead of having people type stuff, every time you have somebody type something in your survey, you're going to massively reduce your completion rate. So instead of having this lower completion rate that you're dissatisfied with and you go, oh, I've tried surveys in the past before, but no, almost nobody filled them out. That's because you're asking people to do mu too much thinking and typing. Instead of thinking and typing, get people clicking, choosing a multiple choice, choosing a picture. That leads us into our next question. Sandra Funk, who's been a guest on the show, she was actually on talking about lead magnets and quizzes. And you did talk about the turning the survey kind of into a quiz there. So Natalie has the next right. question. Yeah. Do you have any incentive? Like, do you put an incentive behind it? Like, fill what? out my survey and or, you get this and you get this. Yeah. So you can do it and we've seen people do it. We have some clients that do it. Generally, we don't typically because if somebody just wants that thing, then they're going to be incentivized enough just to sort of click through and just select the first option, which means you're not necessarily getting their actual answers and the useful intel that you really, really want. And if it's those cool quizzes and funky things like that, the cool thing is the incentive for filling it out is to find out what their outcome is. That's what they really want. And I think that the big thing, thing for us is most surveys that we see or quizzes that we see are very much angled to be beneficial to the business, but they're not that beneficial to the person filling it out. And that's why we've changed everything around to be all about the person who's filling it out. It's all about their own self-interest. At the end of it, bear in mind, if they fill out your survey, it's so that you can serve them better. If they fill out your quiz, it's so they can find out something about them. Do you know what? It doesn't matter how amazing your PDF or your infographic or your lovely 72-part training video program is. <laughs> it doesn't matter how great and beautiful they are. There is nothing more interesting to me than me. Than yourself, yeah. Right? So they want to know about themselves. So if you can make it about them and discovering something about them, like what kind of bathroom should you design or what kind of hallway should you have? So do they get those results once they've taken the survey? Do they get emailed with, okay, here, here's more about you. Your kitchen is fine, but we know you like to party in the lounge. So what's great about this is that it all, it's all based on, on really strong scoring. So you can literally work out based on their answers to your questions, where their strong points are, where their weaknesses are, where there's room for improvement, where there's a problem. Put all of that together into some nice results, which then gets passed across to your email marketing platform. And what's nice is, I mean, particularly with response rate, I know there are other platforms out there, of course, that you can go and check out. With some of the others, what happens is the platform itself just takes something and sends it out to the person after they've taken the survey. What we're more interested in doing is having all that data passed across into your email marketing platform, because now it's there not only to, for you to put together an email that gets sent out automatically right there and then, but also you can then use that later on. It means that whenever you're going to send out an email, if you just want to pull up a list of all the people who fell into one particular category, you can literally just go into your platform where you do all of your marketing from that CRM, your email marketing, marketing automation platform, and just say, okay, great. I want to get a list of everybody who fell into this category, had this tag and answered this. Click one button and boom, you've got them all there. And it's inside your platform where everything else has ever been sent out from. Which means it's really easy. If you have a new offer, I have a new product line coming on, on online, which is going live, and you, you're like, oh, this is a thing for people who like like this kind of bathroom. You can now pull that up inside your CRM and, or your email marketing automation system rather than going, oh, hang on, I need to go over to that other platform again, because you don't need another thing to log into, do you? Hey there, Wingnuts. Do you love doing your own social media, but just don't have a sound strategy in place? Are you just throwing images at the wall, hoping they stick to your ideal client? Well then, Natalie and I are super excited to tell you about our Wingnut Social Strategy Package. One of our expert social media Wingnuts will help you discover your goals, analyze your current performance, build your customized social marketing plan, and coach you on the implementation. It's a tremendous value, and you can find out more by going to wingnutsocial.com slash services or by giving us a call at 1-877-WINGNUT. Again, that's wingnutsocial.com slash services or 1-877-WINGNUT. Now, back to the show. A big thing now for interior designers is vetting potential clients on the website, vetting budgets and how much of a budget a potential client might have. So if I understand you guys right, is that something that you could also put on the survey? You could do a range of budget and depending on where they fall, then that could be sent to my active campaign and one of two or one of three budgets could get a different nurturing email sequence depending on the type of work they have, they're able to afford. So at the risk of setting off your over marketing BS alarm, let me tell you <laughs> about 
<laughs> about sort of what our customers tell us. They call it free money. I think that's a little bit like, oh my gosh, what is it? The nineties do it in a big red headline. Why don't you? But if you call it free money and the reason they call it, and I get, I understand why they call it that. Imagine you've got your form for, to be contacted or your application form to work with you or whatever that might be, just as you say, right? And you have these ranges of budgets. You're going to put at least one range of budget that is below what you can help them with. At least one, probably two, okay? And what you could do, not ordinarily, is you would see an inquiry come in or you'd see that form get submitted or that survey get completed and it would come in and you'd look at it and go, oh, that person's sort of not at the right stage and not at the right level for me to, to work with them. So you just drop them a quick email if you're polite, if you've got some time and just go, hey, I'm really sorry and blah, 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 blah. And you have to sit and, if you're anything like me, worry about how did you say no to someone without coming across as cruel or awful or snobbish? So you, you do that. That's one way of doing it. But imagine instead that you didn't have to waste that time and you don't have to worry about feeling cruel because you're all feeling awful or feeling bad because you're in maybe like a not the best mood of, you know, having the best day or whatever. Imagine instead if as soon as they hit submit on that form on that survey, they go to a different thank you page. As soon as they hit submit and it, that thank you page changes depending on what they said in the survey. So if their budget is what you need or more, then they go to the next page, which says, awesome, here's my calendar, book in a time to chat with me. And that's great. Whereas if they chose the option where their budget is lower than you can work with, you take them to a different thank you page. They don't see your calendar booking, which means you don't waste their time or yours, which is precious to both of you. But instead, you take them to a page where it may be, I don't know, recommend somebody you're maybe affiliated with who's perhaps cheaper than you. Or if that's not the case, maybe it's you put down a little, you have a little course that you've put together, how they can do these things themselves. Or you send them to a resource or, you, or whatever it might be. And if a product you found somewhere else that you can recommend, something like that. So what you're doing is you're always helping the people. Every single person who comes through at the moment is probably not getting help. Some people are getting told it's a yes. Some people are getting told it's a no. And that's taken up people's time, including yours, right? Which is precious. Then of that, the people who are qualified, who can help, get to book an appointment with you and you get to help them. That's wonderful. I love that. And the way that works out so well for interior designers is it's automated vetting, but it, it's not really saying no to anybody. And there's a lot of interior designers that rent, do their services anywhere from full service, high end interior design down to e-design. And I love that if the budget fits full end high service, they can book an appointment with me right away. Or if it's just something that's more like a DIY or an e-design, you can have those. You designers. can educate them. Yeah. You can educate them. You can have them. a PDF on budget mm -hmm. and what things should cost. And then they may or, look at that and say, Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Maybe they're right. And they might take the survey. Or you could do again. Nancy Gansakoffer's designer for a day, and maybe that's their budget. Or maybe they only want to do e design, and then that's the lead nurture sequence they get, depending on it. I absolutely love that. One thing I want to just pull out, which I thought were amazing. So, uh, as usual from you guys. So, the first one is that you get to help everybody. But secondly, by signposting them to the right, the right thing, whether that's working with you or not working with you. But the other really important thing is for the people who can't work with you right now because they're not in the right place is you get to give them some information to educate them and move them toward being able to work with you, which is ultimately, ultimately what they want because of your sphere of influence and the way you've got a great reputation. So that's really important. Now, do you guys ever take any steps? If you've sent someone a survey that wanted your survey, do you ever take any steps if they just don't respond or don't open it? Do you send reminder emails or you just let that go? So we're a big fan of everything being part of a campaign. And we generally think that sending single emails on their own to try and achieve an end result generally isn't going to work. So for us, everything has to integrate and everything has to be automated and everything has to be campaign driven. And so what that means is, and actually it's one of the reasons why why we started Response Suite in the first place was we used to use a different survey platform eight years ago when we started doing all of this. And we wanted to make sure that when somebody filled, when I sent out an email to more than one person with a link to a survey, it's not everyone there is going to fill that in. And likewise, if you send it out to one person today, a couple of people tomorrow, some more people next week, again, some people are not going to fill it out. And so we wanted to be able to have a campaign of like three, four, maybe five emails going out to try and get as many people as possible to fill that out. But we needed to be able to exclude the people who had already filled it out. And that's really the big key because what nobody wants is to receive an email that says, Hey, uh, Jeff, in case you didn't fill out the survey yesterday, which suddenly just sounds so personal and like you just don't care about them at all. 
And the worst thing, of course, is if I'm Jeff and I did fill it out, you've just insulted me as your hyper responder, which is the opposite of what you want to do. Exactly. So for us, it's definitely a case of have four or five, always assume the worst, always assume that nobody's going to fill it out the first four times. Have a bunch of emails going out. And then as soon as somebody does fill out the survey, your survey platform would like tag them inside Active Campaign or whatever. And that would pull them out of that automation, that sequence, and it would put them into the next one. We actually do this and we get loads of praise for this. We've got uh, our podcast, The Email Marketing Show, where we talk about email marketing stuff. One of the things that we get really praised for by our guests is that we have them fill out an application form if they would like to be a guest on the show. And then what happens is we're able to tag them differently and put them into different campaigns to say, yes, you've been accepted. This looks like a great fit or maybe not quite a great fit at the moment for the particular season we're doing. Maybe come back next time. And again, we're able to do that and not follow up with people if they've done the right thing and if they've been in the right place. So that works really, really well. So response suite, if you, you can incorporate that into your website so that a survey can live on your website, but you can also be proactive and send out an email marketing campaign with it. Do I understand that correctly? That's exactly it. There's a couple of ways you can share these things. You can either send people to it on a page that's hosted by us, like you would like an, a third party independent survey thing, if you want to look like that, or you can like take a little, little one line of code and pop that WordPress or whatever kind of website you're using. Yeah. So you can either have it look branded with a response suite and independent, or you can have it totally branded to you and everything. What, what we tend to find is, and, and again, it came about for us was all, all the reason why we wanted to start using surveys was to be able to do surveys where we email them out to our audience, email them out to our customers, email them out to our subscribers. And that was great. And then it was only through discussion and starting to do it that we said, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we could put this as an application form for clients to work with us? Oh, that would be good. Wouldn't it? Oh, wouldn't this be cool if we could put it here? Wouldn't it be cool if we could put it here? Wouldn't it be cool if this suddenly became a and we actually find that website. with most of our customers like they come in because they want to use it for this one thing it might be application form for you or it might be a lead generation quiz for you or it might be your onboarding quiz or, or, or questionnaire or so but then you'll find like lots of different ways that you can use it because we don't limit how many surveys you can use you can like build as many as you want and before you know it you'll be sending your survey home to your partner saying hey love what would you like for dinner <laughs> so how darla proof is this because i'm not like if i if i went on there and i signed up for this and wanted to integrate it with my active campaign stuff would i would i need to hire someone that's a little more technically um adept than i am or is it pretty intuitive user friendly can you use canva have you ever used canva or yes mm -hmm. i do all the time Great. Mm -hmm. If you can use Canva, you can use this. But let's say you were having a crazy day and you forgot how Canva worked. And you just didn't know what the internet That's was. That is possible. You guys don't realize, but that yeah. is actually possible for Darla to forget that. <laughs> that is true. Well, I think you're the same then because I have those days too because I was having one a day. I was like, what's going on? So imagine that was the case. What we do include and what we love to do with our clients is we have like a 14-day trial Okay. And during that 14 days, we will actually talk to every, any client who wants to can book in a 20 minute with us personally, either Rob or myself, and we'll work with you to build it. Did you notice he corrected that from, we'll talk to every customer to, we'll talk to every customer that wants to, because not every customer not everybody wants, wants, to. wants to. Yeah, that's key. <laughs> How would you not want to? <laughs> and you should get results within the first 14 days before you even really pay much. I like it. I'm, I'm going to check it out. Ellen Danick is going to take a drink because every time I take an action that guests recommend, we have a drinking game. So she's out there probably getting under the table with her whiskey. Sambuca's going. <laughs> <laughs> we drink a lot of whiskey on this show. Okay, guys. So this sounds really amazing. I love the, the practice behind it. I like, I really like the idea of vetting within sending different email campaigns to different qualified clients for different level of interior design services. Darla, I uh -huh. think you really like the fact that you don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to talk to me like they want to talk to these guys. No. <laughs> guys, I have to ask you before we get into where the designers can find your app for your response suite app that if you guys are ready for the what up wingnut round now it's time for what up wingnut Wing nut. we've never been more ready i'm ready <laughs> robin kennedy if you were a tree what kind of tree would you be and why i would be he points at me so i have to answer this one first uh, i would be a i don't know much about i trees. would be an oak tree because they grow slow and steady but end up very very strong rather than like growing like a flimsy tree that just falls over but it grows fast I would be a bonsai tree because they're really cool. You like the word bonsai. That's the I problem. Do, yeah. You had to try bonsai. <laughs> the other tree I've heard of. And so I'll be that one. <laughs> the only tree he's heard of. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of a pastry. Hey. <laughs> what would the hashtags on your tombstones be? <laughs> uh, hashtag, he wanted to, so he did. <laughs> 
Hashtag overrated, I think is what mine would be. <laughs> <laughs> if you could have only one superpower, what would it be and why? Russia, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mine has always been flying. As a child, I watched David Copperfield, the illusionist in, in America, flying. And as a kid, I used to lie in bed and I would try what he did and see if I could make it work and it didn't work. So I would, I would want to fly. I would like to be in two places at once. Oh, omnipresent. Yeah, but yeah, not not omnipresent and like being l- everywhere at once, but just two places at once. I'm not greedy. I would just like two places at once. One, because I let you get more stuff done, but two, it would really mess people up. You could be on a podcast in stereo. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and last, last but not least, please recommend a book that has had a profound impact on you either personally or professionally. So mine is a, an obscure one. It's a book called Win the Game. It was actually written by a magician called Steve Cohen, who's known as the millionaire's magician, performs for high net worth individuals and an amazing show in New York. Uh, and he wrote a book. It basically applies the principles of a magician to everyday life, to business, to mindset. Uh, really, really good book. I read it as a kid growing up and it talks about confidence and persuasion and tons of other stuff. So Win the Game by Steve Cohen is probably mine. I'm going to go with Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. If you've not read that, it's really about the the real one of the real principles in there that I took away was around the power of mental rehearsal. So the first time you do something and you're usually quite nervous about it, it's actually not the first time you're doing it. Those sound amazing. I'm absolutely going to add those to my audible queue and and listen to those. Those are definitely unique. We have not received those recommendations. Those yet. are right up your alley. Those are right up my alley. That's exactly right. Guys, please tell the wingnuts where they can find out more about you, more about Response Suite. And I think I understand, don't you have a special offer just for our listeners? Yeah. So uh, Kennedy, do you want to talk about where they find us and the podcast first? Sure. So if you want to, if you want to look at the podcast and learn about email marketing, whether you're beginning or you want to do it even better, you can find the email marketing show and all your favorite podcast players and even the podcast players you don't like. We're also, of course, on social media. It's just at response suite on pretty much everything. Instagram is probably our biggest hangout. Probably where I we're going to say so. We're always doing stupid things on the Instagram. However, for listeners of the podcast, we do have a special offer. If you want to, if you like what we've said and you want to check out response suite and see how it works for a totally low pressure free trial, uh, sorry, cheap trial, then you're welcome to do cheap so. trial, cheap trial. As Kennedy mentioned, there is a 14 day $1 trial, but don't go to response suite.com and get it. Instead, go to the website I'm going to give you in just a second. Basically, what we're going to give you is the 14-day trial for $1. Included in that, we'll also give you a four-part video training course that we did called the Survey Marketing Masterclass. It teaches eight different marketing campaigns, all revolving around surveys. And you get to keep that. Even if you decide to cancel the trial and go off and use a different platform, you can take the course with our best wishes and use it anyway. That's totally yours. And also we'll give you a free implementation call. As Kennedy mentioned, you can jump on a call with us. We'll literally go through it with you, help you work out what kind of questions you should be asking, where this is going to fit, how you can get the quickest wins and the best results. So to get all of that, don't go to responsesuite.com. Instead, go to responsesuitedeal.com forward slash wingnut. So that's response suite as in S-U-I-T-E, responsesuitedeal.com forward slash wingnut. And that's where you'll be able to get the 14 day $1 trial plus all of the other goodies as well. Awesome. I'm going to go there right after the show. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today and opening up our minds a little bit to the, the power of surveys for our marketing, for our interior design business. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Darla, today's show, mm-hmm. I'm sure our friend Ellen Danik is completely just wasted because what these guys just described to us, you are already chomping at the bit to get over there, to sign up, to try it, to check it out. It sounds really pretty cool. Well, you know how I am with apps and automation. I love anything that makes it Darla-proof. And this ca- this sounds a 100% Darla-proof. And Canva's pretty Darla-proof. And I really like the idea of having a survey live on the website that will funnel at the <laughs> loss of having another word for that, clients to the exact tier level of email marketing nurturing sequence that you need. If you guys have a uh, an email marketing service, if you have MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, I, I don't know too much about MailChimp, but I know ActiveCampaign is very robust. You can tag and target, and it's really capable of utilizing all the points that this app seems to be able to deliver. So I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you're in gonna there. You're gonna try, and then you're gonna let us know, right? I am. I'm gonna yeah, definitely I follow. Know. Yeah, I'll let you know. But gotta I mean, let us know because you know. Listen, a magician and a mind reader. How perfect is that for the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was classic. It was awesome. It was totally a Darla wing. It was actually totally a wingnut. Podcast. I would love to have a pint with them in Newcastle. Well, let's go or Old Castle or Old Castle. <laughs>
We could have a pint in Newcastle in one of the old castles. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I do think that the segues, although it's been a hot minute since we've had Sandra Funk on with her episode on doing the quizzes and the lead quizzes for lead magnets and getting them in there and that and also the packages episode that we did and vetting the clients. And if maybe you have a package, maybe you have a DIY package and then that client's budget is a certain level of amount. Here's your nurturing campaign for this package. That's about where you said you were, Mr. Client. You know, I, I just think that that could be, I don't know. I love it. Well, good, because now you have homework. <laughs> it never ends. It never ends. You do this to yourself, Darla. <laughs> Natalie, John Wick from Hot Toys. Yeah, I already forgot what you for said. For Christmas. I forgot what you said. All right, guys, if you like what you hear, please leave us a review to whatever the hell you're listening to this podcast on. Tell your friends what the hell. Tell your enemies. Follow us on social at Wingnut Social or give us a call 1-877-WINGNUT and we will be happy to regale you with our social media expertise <laughs> for your design business or whatever business. And I think that's it for today, Night. Got anything else? Nope. So long. See ya. You've reached the end of this episode of Wingnut Social, but that's only your first step. Be sure to head to wingnutsocial.com to reach out to us directly and schedule your free consultation with one of our Wingnut Social Media Specialists to take your business from social mediocre to social media master. We'll see you on the next episode of Wingnut Social, your social media tightly fastened. If we're rubbish, it's not because we're rubbish. We no, we're okay. <laughs> well, this works. Karina, are you muted? I'm going to take that as a yes. Take that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do it now or after? Let's not take over, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got called Robert. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Good boy, Mango.